Welcome to today's session on curriculum concerning African American and Native history, culture, and spirituality, and their importance to our Catholic schools. My name is Mary Pat Donahue, and I'm the Executive Director of the Secretariat of Catholic Education here at the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops. And I'm joined today by two of my colleagues um, who will introduce themselves now. Donna. Hello, everyone. I'm Donna Grimes, Assistant Director for African American Affairs at the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops, and I support that staff, I staff that subcommittee. Great. Welcome, Donna. Thank Father. Thank you, Mary Pat. I'm Father Michael Carson. I'm the Assistant Director for Native American Affairs, and I work with the subcommittee of Native American Affairs. Great. Welcome. Father Mike, there is a program that you're involved in that is called DANCE. Can you explain to us what DANCE stands for and why it's important? Sure. Uh, DANCE stands for Dialogue with African Americans and Natives in Catholic Education. Uh, what happened a number of years ago is uh, Catholic scholars, both African American and Native American, uh, they got together and uh, they wanted to, they were concerned about what we're teaching in our Catholic schools concerning with both communities, with the African Americans and Native American communities. So they got together with uh, Donna and myself. And we talked about how, ways to improve uh, the ways we teach, and especially in curriculum, about Native Americans and African Americans. Excellent. Donna, what do you hope this initiative will achieve? Well, I, I believe that you know, incorporating the experiences of, of Native and African, African Americans in a natural and unforced way is going to do three things, really. It's going to answer a lot of questions that are on the minds of young people today. They hear our conversations about race and you know, they're thinking about it and trying to figure things out. Um, it's also going to help to reduce bias. Mm. And I think it's also going to disrupt racism, racist mm -hmm. thinking and racist behavior. And I think that when done well, the, uh, the products of this uh, initiative, we're looking at developing a toolkit and other guidelines and best practices for teachers and administrators. It's going to help to form knowledgeable and compassionate and justice-minded young Catholics. That's really beautiful. It certainly um, reflects the church's understanding of education as formative mm -hmm. and uh, yes. why it's critically important. Father Mike, what steps have already been taken in the Catholic Native communities to address curricular issues and concerns? There's been a lot of steps throughout the country. Uh, bishops have taken their own initiative when this concern has been brought to their attention. One of the most important projects that I've been involved with a number of years ago with the, was with the California Catholic Conference, the bishops in California. Uh, there was a concern with uh, the natives in California, especially with the canonization of Unipur Serra. Uh, so the California Catholic Conference got together and they did a number of initiatives to address those concerns. One is how they teach about the native Californians in the Catholic school system. So uh, we had a group together uh, that went literally line by line of the curriculum dealing with the third and fourth grade mm. for native, uh, native Californians. And we talk about the, just uh, removing some of the racist language of uh, that curriculum. The curriculum was just an adaptation from the California curriculum of the public schools. And what we found was quite amazing. There's a lot of concerns uh, that were rightly justified in some words that were used, uh, some ways that we, they were teaching about uh, native Californians. And we did a very good, good work and that's uh, done today. Well, it certainly brings up an important concern around the resources that we have, many of which are becoming dated, and the need that we have then to form our teachers to recognize that and to replace that with, with something better. So Donna, where do we begin teaching about the experience of African Americans? And you know, can we find better ways of, of utilizing maybe Black History Month and Black, Cast, uh, Black History and Black Catholic History beyond just February, November, mm -hmm. and the birth anniversary of Dr. King? Those are sort of all the benchmarks that we have, but is there exactly. a still better way? Absolutely, I really feel that, we, that the experience of, uh, of African Americans needs to be done in a very natural and unforced way. It should happen um, throughout the year and should be integrated into the whole curriculum. You know, there are ways to do that in a very natural way. Uh, African Americans are present when we speak about social studies, of course, but also religion, science, mathematics, um, language arts. There's so many ways that it can be incorporated. And I think, so it should be part of the full curriculum. And also I think that we need to, uh, to recognize that black history does not begin with slavery. And it does not end with the civil rights movement, you know, kind of bracketed by those, but really to be able to do some introduction and connection with Africa, because that's really 
Excellent. That's, the, those are, that's where our roots are. A absolutely, mm -hmm. and it speaks really to uh, an understanding of today's events, if you can understand mm -hmm. the origins properly. I'm also mm -hmm. thinking as you're speaking about uh, Native American, or, I'm sorry, African American contributions mm -hmm. to culture and the arts as well, mm -hmm. yeah. um, and that we're just looking to, to have a more integrated um, approach, really mm -hmm. for both groups. Uh, Father Mike, how do you think curriculum is connected to racism and to the U.S. Catholic Bishop's pastoral letter against racism? It's a very important question. Uh, both Don and I have worked on the, the pastoral uh, over wider hearts and it kind of has a blueprint not only for African Americans but also Natives. In fact, in the document itself, more uh, lines are given to Natives and that's purposely done, saying that racism is just not a problem with African American communities but all communities even especially the Native American communities. Mm -hmm. So that becomes very important. In, in terms of, of uh, what we do is in the Catholic Church, uh, the uh, doctor's oath comes to mind of do no harm. Mm -hmm. The object of that, uh, we, the pastoral letter talks about looking at all institutions about racism with that uh, anti-racism lens, including the, the Catholic Church. The Catholic Church is, uh, of course, uh, has uh, human beings and uh, they're prone to, to racism like anybody else, but hopefully we can take steps to uh, minimize that. Uh, the most important, I think, is to understand that there are racism, but it's subtle, it's not uh, overt, mm -hmm. and that uh, in terms of our discernment, especially in the, in the time of Lent, is to find out those subtle reasons and those causes for racism, especially what we have in the curriculum, so we're not teaching racist and racist ideologies for the next generation of uh, Catholic kids. So I think that's a really important point. There is certainly the his importance of the historical element, but also this, this theological sense that we want developed in our kids based on the church's understanding of the dignity of each human person as a reflection of the divine image. Mm -hmm. Certainly important. So. Donna, for those out there in the field mm -hmm. of Catholic ed who are working in the area of curriculum, mm -hmm. what should they be aware of? Well, I think they need to, um, they need to review what's available right now and to remove thing, you know, uh, information that's incorrect, mm -hmm. replace it with information that is correct and it's not biased. Um, there's abundance of good resource materials out there. I mean, all kinds of, in all formats, podcasts, films, books, etc. cetera. And uh, so there's, there are a lot of sources there. I think they need to be aware also of uh, correcting the notion that Africa is a country. Ah. Africa is a continent. You yes. know, 54 countries and several yeah. territories. It's a country. And that um, when we look at the connection between Africa and African Americans, it, it goes beyond, uh, beyond the historical uh, tragedy of slavery. Mm. And we have, currently we have relationships now. And I think sure. to, to form those bridges is important. Mm -hmm. And to also to present Africa as a, as a vast, well, first of all, it's, very, it's vast in terms of space mm -hmm. and, and people, population, but to show that they're different, uh, um, you know, different regions that are important. There's a lot of interest, interesting things that can be brought out there. But then the other, th other point I'd like to make is that the African Union recognizes six regions, you know, north, south, east, west, central, but also the diaspora, Africa mm -hmm. and the diaspora. That's African Americans, sure. Africans who are in the UK, in Canada, and, and around the world. Mm -hmm. And so to be able to show that, I think that part is very important. Yeah, clearly, uh, I would think too many different cultures yes. on that continent. Yes, and, yeah, um, many different are cultures. Distinct and have made their own contributions to our own culture and our own exactly. experiences. Mm -hmm. Father Mike, there are aspects of Native ministry that many people are not aware of. How would you address the curriculum in such a way as to help our students be familiar with their narratives? I would like to pick up on what uh, Donna said. Is that also uh, applies to uh, Native Americans. When you talk about Native Americans or, or Alaskan Natives or even Hawaiian Indigenous, it's like talking about Europeans. Uh, each has their own individual culture. It's very di diverse and very vast. Uh, so when you talk about uh, Natives, you, I even try to not even use the term Native Americans, but even Natives, it, it requires a, a vast notion of cultures, spiritualities, histories, and, and, and narratives. That's the first thing. But there's a lot of things that uh, teachers, principals, and those involved in, curr in curriculum can do right now. Mm -hmm. uh, Don talked about the toolbox, we're working out data of the USCCB. But there's some aspects that will be in the toolbox that can be done right now. First, the most important thing is do not take curriculum as face value, especially if you get something from the, the state that's used for public schools. 
uh, needs to be uh, included with a Catholic lens, but also a lens looking on that there's some racist ideologies that need to, to be removed. Uh, I think the most important part is uh, the golden rule, ask a question. Uh, put yourself in native shoes. If I was talking about my ancestry, my family, where I come from, when I use the term for natives, would I be offended? Would that really get to me? And it says, well, you can't talk about my family that way. Well, then uh, if you're talking about natives, then you can't talk about them that way. So first and foremost, try to use the golden rule. Uh, and also, and I, even in my own uh, uh, history, and I was a product of public schools, uh, but there's a lot of things that are just left out that I never learned about. I didn't learn uh, about the massacres of uh, natives in California, that they were actually shot uh, as sport by the 49ers and others. I just didn't learn about that because that just was not taught. Uh, we just had the uh, local ideas of uh, Native Americans and the kind of uh, the depleted after the uh, 1700s, which is not true. There's California Natives around today. That goes to uh, my, uh, my third point here, is don't talk about Native communities in the past tense. I hear that all the time when you talk about the Sioux who lived, well, they're living now in North and South Dakota, so it's important to think about uh, Natives as a continuous line from the 1800s onward. Because a lot of people teach about the Natives only up to 1890, and that's it. Right. Uh, so we need to think about ways we can talk about Native cultures and spiritualities beyond even up to, to, to today. Be educated on the subject of uh, Natives. There are all uh, areas in the United States at one time were part of tribes. So your school that you have is it right now was once uh, tribal land. Find out about the tribe, uh, its aspects, its spiritualities, uh, the people. A lot of tribes also have uh, public relations people who would be very glad to come to your classroom to talk about uh, the tribe, their aspects, uh, who they are, and their histories, and their narratives. And also in my own ministry, uh, one of the aspects of a lot of Native American uh, cultures is the use of elders. Elders become very, very important because they are the ones who are the keepers of the stories and the narratives. So uh, always make a reach out to elders and have somebody to talk to, to your classroom. Uh, be uh, educated, especially for high schools, of what uh, Native communities are going through now. There's a lot of aspects of poverty, but not just that, but to just be educated of the problems and difficulties, legislation, other issues that come before Congress, before become uh, before your local and state governments, uh, just be aware of those aspects and become an advocate of uh, Native American communities. And the last one I have goes with faith. Now we're faithful people, but uh, sometimes, when, especially when you talk about spiritualities of uh, Native Americans, there's a lot of concern that uh, I have uh, thinking that uh, the Holy Spirit was somehow was uh, only on uh, Columbus's ship that wasn't here before. Uh, but that's not true. The natives have a rich, a rich and deep history of spiritualities. Uh, and the Holy Spirit, God, was alive and well here for tens of thousands of years. So it's important to think about it's just not the European culture coming into the United States or into the Western Hemisphere. But God, the uh, Holy Spirit, was alive and well here. There was not a stowaway on Columbus's ship. Well, you know, you have, you've both um, sort of alluded to the need for us to do better, certainly, in terms of how we formulate curriculum and also how it's taught. Um, do you, I'll ask each of you, I'll start with you, Father, but are there um, particular resources in this area that would help teachers and designers of the curriculum that we haven't mentioned? Well, uh, I think the most important is to reach out uh, to uh, tribal members and elders, okay. uh, because they ha do have a lot of resources, and uh, even uh, if you go through the website and, and click on the tribe, uh, go first of all to the communications officer and just uh, talk with them. There's also the uh, Congress here, the Indian Congress, that has a lot of resources, uh, both in terms of history and narratives, but also in terms of what we can do. Uh, reach out to my office uh, at the USCCB yep. and to Donna's office. Yep. When you have a concern about the where to go uh, from here, if you have a question about uh, Native American resources or narratives or want more ideas, uh, contact me at uh, our office. Our, off our email is, of course, on the web page at usccb.org. And I have a lot of resources uh, in terms of what I have learned from uh, Catholic Native scholars throughout the country especially in, in terms of uh, curriculums. Mm. 
And uh, last, uh, look out, look with when your curriculum uh, into uh, what you're doing in your schools. Uh, look for what's left out. Mm. You say that there's a missing page here, a missing story. Uh, don't be afraid to go and find that missing page and that missing story and try to include it into your, your narrative, especially in teaching. Great. Thank you. Donna? Yes, I mean, I think uh, Father touched on a couple of things that made, had me thinking that really when we talk about um, Catholic schools, what Catholic schools can do and the resources they can bring to it, to the, the whole subject, there's uh, there, the, the black presence in the Bible. There's, there's a need to make connections with, for mm. the African-American mm. presence in the Catholic Church. Mm. People don't think of black Catholics sure. as being part of the Catholic Church, but we have been members of the Catholic Church in this country going back to the 14th century. You know, you look at places like Florida Certainly. and Los Angeles Absolutely. and Chicago. And to be able to say, oh, <laughs> this, and yet we have no African-American uh, born saints. And that's where, you know, we have six men and women holy men and women on the path to sainthood, and we are championing that cause and praying for a saint. We also have other, other saints, such as St. Martin de Porres, sure. and, and who, are, who are clearly of African descent, and we relate, it, we relate to them as well. So there's the church presence. And the church's responsibility, even acknowledging mm -hmm. where the church uh, misstepped, mm -hmm. where the church was complicit, mm -hmm. and, you know, mm -hmm. um, and yet how the efforts that the church is making today, um, the various organ church organizations that are, sure. you know, that are trying to... Uh, to lift up the spirituality, recognize and maintain the spirituality of black Catholics. Um, I think also that, you know, as we make, uh, in terms of resources, there are so many resources available I'd like to lift up two. One is a curriculum that was developed by um, a graduate of the Institute for Black Catholic Studies, and it is called the uh, uh, black, Catholic, uh, black Catholic History. And uh, it, it's a nice curriculum that really nice. infuses, uh, you know, black Catholics, from uh, different ages and 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 contemporary um, contemporary heroes, if you will, and people, you know, it infuses that into lessons that are age appropriate for grades K through eight. And then there's also a terrific resource that is uh, uh, Black History 365. It's a huge oh, text yes, with yes. QR codes and further research resources, great pictures, and they, you know, they have a, a, a what they what the curriculum tries to do is to develop young people who are. Uh, compassionate listeners, mm -hmm. you know, are looking for solutions who are knowledgeable mm -hmm. so that when the issues of racism or issues regarding advancement of, uh, of African Americans, uh, it, when those issues are raised, they're able to, you know, to address those to things and, and to engage, to ask, yeah. ask the right questions in ways that don't put people off, mm -hmm. but to say, you know, that, hey, I'm coming with knowledge, you yeah. know, and, and what can you tell me about that and trying to advance it that way. So I think. And it's, it's still in process, sure. it's still in process, sure. but there's, there's a lot of good information there. And I would just urge teachers and administrators not to be afraid of the chatter that's out, mm -hmm. in, the, uh, <laughs> out in the world there, don't teach this, don't teach that. What we're talking about is just teach the correct history. Yeah. You know, don't, don't keep teaching mythology, teach the correct history. And there's such a richness there and everyone will really benefit from that. I think that's very, very true and very heartening that there is a growing body of resources available. Um, but I'm going to endorse the two of you as a resource, because as you're talking, and you sort of alluded to this at the, at the end, uh, Donna, which is, uh, it's one thing to have the substance of a curriculum, the content mm -hmm. and the importance. Um, and then we really need to develop that philosophical lens, right? The, mm -hmm. the, the true and full history that also includes the church's proper anthropology. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's a teacher in a room having to do it. And mm -hmm. so sometimes there is quite, I think, frankly, discomfort on the part of some teachers. How do I talk about this? What words should I or should I not use? Right, right. And your offices stand ready mm -hmm. to assist a diocese in understanding how these things are, are well presented. Absolutely. Is that correct? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. And I, I yeah, so. heartily oh. endorse you both. <laughs> Thank you so much. My Thank background you. is in education, and so I have a heart for that. And I yes. understand teachers are very creative. They, yes. they, they have a problem. They're problem solvers. Oh, yeah. They figure out creative ways to do it. Yep. But there is a bit of, this is a sensitive area. And I'm right. sure, exactly. you know, when you, you're not sure how much you know or whether you're on the right footing right. with their resources, we're certainly available to assist in that. That's excellent. Yeah. Thank yes, you. That was my uh, background. Uh, I have an educational background. And work, working with teachers, I know that uh, they're, they're very uh, creative, have a lot of imagination, but they do need the resources. Mm -hmm. And if you present them with resources, they grab onto that. 
Thank you both. Um, now we'll just narrow our lens a little bit as we're winding down to thinking about the particular concerns that would pertain mm -hmm. to Catholic schools. Donna, mm -hmm. are there yeah. particular concerns for Catholic well, schools? I do think so. Uh, one of my concerns is that, uh, you know, w Catholic schools are being outpriced for a lot of families. Mm -hmm. That's one thing. And yet, uh, so those who, and those who choose Catholic schools often are not Catholic, right. you know, and especially when you're looking at the African American community. Yes. But the, the church was a big evangelizer for black Catholics. Absolutely. Most of our leaders in Congress and, you know, and, and in business and et cetera, and, and corporations came through Catholic schools at some point. So the value of Catholic school mm -hmm. is appreciated. But what is not being passed on as effectively as, it, as I believe it should be is the faith. Mm. You have a Catholic school, mm -hmm. you, you know, accepting my tuition, you are paying my tuition money, and yet my kid is not getting a good Catholic education. They're because they, because the other, uh, because they're, they're not that many Catholics in their classroom anymore, as there were at one time. Um, and I think that's a mistake. I really feel that the church should trust that their efforts to evangelize, to share the faith, will be received. Yeah. The seed is planted and let God take, God do the rest. And I've known young people who've brought their whole families into the faith. Yeah. They came through and they were, you know, they were, they went, they walked to uh, our parish for religious education. Right. Next thing you know, the mother and the grandmother are there and the aunts and, uh, you know, cousins. It's really, it's amazing. And it takes us back to our mission roots too. It, yes. it requires a mission mindset when you have yes. uh, maybe a large student body um, that are not Catholic. It, it, in, instead of... Um, stepping back away from the teaching of the mm -hmm. faith, we need to really be more robust. Right, absolutely, more robust. And, and, and you'd be surprised. And there's the re-evangelization as well. So there are those who've been exposed, but they kind of fell away. So I think, um, you know, for the young person coming through the school system to see that they have a place there too. They're not an anomaly. There, are, there were some who came before them who really held on to the faith, despite, you know, despite the, the, the storms that they had to, yes. to weather, the faith was something they held on to. And uh, I'd Amen. like to see that continue. Beautiful, mm -hmm. beautiful part of our own Catholic history. Um, any parting thoughts about uh, next steps and, you know, who someone might want to contact if they're interested mm -hmm. in learning more? Um, Father, I'll start with you. If there's anything, you've given us a good um, comprehensive list, but any last thoughts on uh, next steps? Uh, yeah, besides, of course, contact me. But well, there's also yeah. <laughs> another resource, uh, is, and, and a lot of people do take advantage of that. A lot of universities now have Native American studies, mm -hmm. and uh, that's a, lo a lot of our part of our little dance group is that they teach uh, Native American studies. Uh, so that would also be a, a very important resource. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, there's a lot of uh, things I'm concerned about, and we talk a lot about them. One is to make sure we don't talk about Native Americans as the dinosaurs of past race. Right. Mm -hmm. They're an important and vital uh, community, not only in the United States communities, not only in the United States, but also in our church. 20% uh, of uh, Native communities are Catholic, and they're uh, certainly a vital and important part, both their cultures and spiritualities, all part are, of our Roman Catholic Church. And uh, the most important thing is just when you teach a curriculum, be really careful about the words that you use, uh, because even one word, uh, if you use it in the wrong, the wrong way, does teach uh, the children to be racist. And the example that from the California Catholic Conference has to come up with, one example is the word settlers. When settlers are just referred to the whites coming into the, the, uh, a place or a state and not referring to the natives, that tells the, the kids that uh, the, uh, the settlers are, are white and Anglo-Saxon and the uh, natives are, are not settlers, mm -hmm. which is not true because they mm -hmm. did farming and settled land also. Mm -hmm. So just be really careful the words you use because sure. as we talked about earlier, the subtleties is where communication about racism is, 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 is placed. Mm -hmm. And Pastoral talks about the idea that uh, racism can be wiped out in one generation. It's just mm -hmm. a, it's a learned behavior. We're not born racist. Mm -hmm. We have to learn it from our, our parents, grandparents, or even society. Mm -hmm. So that good news is that it can be wiped out in one, in one generation. The bad news is it requires a lot of work and effort on our parts. But we are the people of the good news. Yes, we yes, are. This is, this is good. Donna, anything else? Oh, I would definitely lift up the Institute for Black Catholic Studies. Great. And I think, you know, if you can get to the Institute, it's, it's uh, held in the summer at Xavier University in New Orleans. Mm, yeah. Wonderful experience. You could get a master's in, in that field, or you could take enrichment courses. And the good. courses are, are fascinating, very interesting. I'm an adjunct professor there, 
and um, teaching a course on building intercultural competence for ministers with a, uh, with a focus on diversity within the African diaspora. Mm. So looking at the relationships between Africans, Afro-Haitians, I mean, you know, Haitians, yeah, sure. et cetera, uh, et cetera uh, and how we work together. Um, but I would definitely say that. And you, you know, it's, it, you'll see that if you, get, if you get there, you'll see it's a diverse uh, student body. The, the, you know, they've yes. got uh, clergy and lay people, lay leaders, pastoral leaders. Uh, it's, it's really an exciting program, and of course, Thank New Orleans. You know. What a, what a great place to oh, be! Oh, absolutely. What there, now <laughs> what? there's some history. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. exactly. Um, I, I'll make a plug for this. It was helpful to me when I was uh, still working in the school, which was the um, Smithsonian uh, Museum mm -hmm. of uh, Native Americans, and mm -hmm. the um, Museum of African American yeah. Culture and History was not yet built when I right. was in the school. Mm -hmm. But I imagine both of those institutes absolutely. have some yes. good education outreach and so. absolutely ability to view things, even virtually. A lot of them are putting yes. parts of collections. Mm -hmm. uh, and around online. the country, there are you know there are museums in Birmingham and Montgomery and sure. and other uh, Cincinnati, sure. you know, Underground Railroad. Uh, yeah. And, and whatnot. So they're, you know, they're, yeah. and that's the thing. We also, the, the pastoral letter speaks to the bishops about, you know, educate ourselves, you Definitely. know, and those are things you can do, certainly. And teachers, you know, I'm, I'm a fan for, fi for um, field trips. Bring back field trips. Bring back <laughs> field trips. Absolutely. I agree with you. I loved them when I was teaching. Yes. Closing thoughts, Father, have you? Uh, I think we uh, covered a lot yep. of uh, areas. Uh, I think uh, the most important part is the, the respect and dignity of the Native American communities mm -hmm. and their narr narrative, and to include their narrative rather than uh, uh, other people saying what, they're, what they should be, is to include what they want to be and what they want to be called and, uh, and their spiritualities and who, who they are, is to ask them and to make sure we devise any curriculum to make sure that we have the Native voices. Wonderful. Both communities being represented. I think um, certainly it's a call to all of us in Catholic education to think in terms mm -hmm. of a more integrated content-based approach mm -hmm. to free ourselves simply from textbooks because I think we've all discovered they are quite inadequate mm -hmm. in addressing yes. this topic and that yes. we want to yeah. avoid even things that we've done in the past that seemed positive that can undermine our larger message. Yes. So we want, for example, Black history not to simply be confined to this month of February, but rather to be integrated as the Native experience should be integrated throughout. And we can draw upon our beautiful uh, anthropology, our theology, mm -hmm. our history, our culture. There are many, many things. And if I know Catholic school teachers out there, they will be excited about this and they will be eager to do this. Thank you both for a wonderful conversation. And thank you for joining us. Thank you, Mary Pat. Thank you, Mary Pat. <laughs> and thank you, NCEA. And NCEA. <laughs>